Hello students, welcome to Daily English Homework. Let's take a look at the homework. It says write 10 sentences using in. This is a very important video. Uh, I did a lot of research on all the ways we use in in English and I found 120, at least 120 different ways we use in in English and I collected them and I'm going to go over them in this video. That's why it's so long. But if you watch this video, you will be an expert on how and when to use in in English. I think this is an essential video to watch to help you use this word. It's a very important word in English. And of course, at the end of the video, uh, you need to write 10 sentences using in. I don't want you to use 10 of the same style sentences using in the same way. I want you to use in in 10 different ways. And you post that in the comments. So let's get started. Very important video, very long, but I think you will learn a lot. Now, what you need to know is in is very common as a preposition. Something is in. It's very common and that's the easiest way to use in, uh, but in is also used in collocations. I'm going to talk about that later. Uh, there's adjectives that, that we add in after the adjectives. There's idioms. There's phrasal verbs. There's so many ways to use in and I will put a PDF link of this lesson uh, in the comments section if you want to uh, download it and check it later because there's just so much information. Okay, let's let's move along here. All right. When talking about time, we use in. All right, this is one of the more common ways we use in. When talking about time, we use in for an unspec unspecified time of the day, a month, a season, or a year. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the basic way to use in. We're using it for time. So this sentence here says, I always brush my teeth in the morning. We have to say in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Okay, so in is very important for these expressions. We didn't say the time of day. We just said generally in the morning. Uh, my birthday is in June. Okay. We didn't say the date. We just said the month in June. So before any month, we use in, only in. It's always cold in winter. All right. So the season in winter. So in is used in all of these cases. And the last one, my brother was born in 1999. When you use a year, you must use in. So this is the common way to use in uh, for time expressions. Uh, you can you could make some sentences using these expressions. Let's move on because there's a lot of information in this video. When talking about places, in is used to indicate a location, place, or inside buildings. So I used to live in Canada. So before a country, we're going to put in. I live in Canada. The city of Seoul is in South Korea, another country. Instead of country, you could say a city because I live in South Korea. And I could say I live in in Seoul, something like that. I live in London, the location. And very basic, I am in my room. So in my house, in my room for a location. That you make a sentence like that. Make sure if you say live, live in. Let's look at collocations. Now, collocations is common. This is very difficult to learn. So we're getting a little more difficult. So pay attention. Uh, collocations 
are common word combinations in English. So native speakers often use usually two words together very often uh, to express something. And that's called a collocation. And so let's look at the first one. It says in custody. So in will always go with custody. We will not use another word. Uh, on custody, no, at custody, no. In custody is always together. That's called a collocation. So in custody, what does that mean? Someone is arrested and at the police station. Very common. So is Robin still in custody? Well, if this was true, uh, I would be arrested and at the police station right now. Uh, I'm not in prison. I'm just at the uh, police station and I was just arrested, okay, and taken to the police station. So that's in custody. Always, again, it's a collocation. You, you have to use in custody. You cannot use uh, just like custody. It has to be in custody, not on custody, only in custody. That's the expression. It's very common. You need to know it. After custody, you know, maybe I go to the court and then I'm in prison. So when someone has committed a serious crime, they go to jail. So her uncle is in prison for murder. Do, do, do. So again, collocation. We, ha we always say in prison. He's in prison. She's in prison when describing the location. In hospital, when someone is ill, so this one might be confusing to a lot of students. She's in hospital with cancer. Now you're thinking, can I say she's in, in the hospital with cancer? So you could say in the hospital, that's fine. But a native speaker will use the expression, she's in hospital with cancer. She's in hospital. Uh, he's in prison. He's in custody to describe uh, the location or what's happening to that person. So she's in hospital with cancer. But if you said she's in the hospital with cancer, that's okay. Can you say her uncle is in the prison? No. Is, is Robin still in the custody? No, 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 no. No, only this one is possible, but a, good, a better expression is in hospital. Practice these in your homework. In school, again, when someone is studying in school, uh, all her children are now in school. Now, this one, yeah, the children are in school. You can say like hospital in the school. You can also, you can also say at school, but in school is a good expression to use. So this one could be at school, in school. In church, when someone attends a religious service. So I think Esther's in church at the moment. So can you say, I think Esther's in the church at the moment? Yeah, but it's a little different meaning. So we just want to you know, native speakers always want to use quick expressions, speak fast. So we're going to use in church at the moment. In court, when someone is in the courthouse in front of a judge. So you are in the courthouse in front of a judge. Maybe you're a, a criminal or a lawyer, but you are in front of a judge. You are in court. So John is a lawyer but he doesn't often speak in court. Can you say in the court? That's strange. You want to use in court. That's a better expression. In bed, I'm sure a lot of you already know this one. You, be, you are in your bed. On Sunday mornings, I like to grab a cup of coffee and read in bed. So you can say and read in my bed, but again, a native speaker might just say read in bed. I like to read in bed. In traffic, driving with many cars, of course, I hate traffic. So I listen to podcasts 
podcasts when I'm stuck in traffic. Okay, this is a very useful expression. They're all useful expressions, but certainly a lot of students don't know how to express stuck in traffic. We have to say stuck in traffic. Please do not say stuck in the traffic or you cannot make that plural. Don't say stuck in traffics. Stuck in traffic. In the mail, the check is in the mail. So uh, this is going to use the, but in the mail means, yeah, it's being delivered by the mailman or it's at the post office or something like that. But the check, someone has to pay me. The check is in the mail. The package is in the mail. Something is in the mail. Uh, you should get it in a few days. So we, we use in the mail here. All right, a lot of expressions already. Let's move on. We can also use in when we refer to being in a place or a position, but not necessarily in a physical place. Okay, so we can be in a place. What does that mean? We can be in a place or position, but not a physical place. So uh, we're not always, you know, right now I'm in a room physically. So these expressions, not always talking about a physical place. Let's take a look. Very, all of these are very common. I, you know, I tried to delete ones that I thought were not common. And as I was going through the list, I'm like, all of these are very important. You must learn them all and practice them in your homework. In place, if something's in place, it's ready. It is prepared. So let's take a look. The government has put many police in place before the protest starts. So there's going to be a protest and the government put many police in place. They are ready. Where it's just a general statement. We're not specifically saying where, but we can imagine that there are police uh, located many places they're in place. They are ready. They are ready and prepared for the protest. In order, you are organized or ready. He put all of all his paperwork in order before he moved abroad. So yes, you are getting your things in order. In order, very common, means organized or ready. In position, when you are in the right place before an event. So all the players were in position before the football game started. So we can imagine the football field and all the players are in position. They are in the right place before the game started. They are in position. Here's an idiom. In the same boat. Uh, because it's an idiom, so we're not talking about boats. What what's this idiom talking about? Very common idiom. Actually, I like I like to use this idiom. Uh, it's one of my I would say top ten idioms. To be in the same situation. So I'm in the same boat. It's an idiom. You cannot check. You cannot change the words. It's always in the same boat. You cannot say in same boat. You cannot say in the similar boat. You cannot say in the same ship. In the same boat. So I'm in the same boat as you. So the same situation as you. I don't know if I will get a good IELTS score. All right. So I'm in the same boat. Idiom. Let's move on. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm going so fast. And I can only give one example for each, each uh, usage of in. But I hope you can watch this video learn and practice some of these expressions. All right. In expressions also describe the state, condition, or situation of a person or thing. So in shape, this is very common. In shape always means the physical condition of someone or something. So lots of people are trying to get in shape before summer. Very common to be in shape. Make sure your, your body looks good. To be in healthy physical condition. 
to be in shape. These are very common in a good or bad condition. This car is in a really bad condition. Uh, this car is in a really good condition. So you're in a good condition, in a bad condition. You could be in good or bad health. My grandmother is still in good health or my grandmother is not in good health. My grandmother is in bad health. So we would use in for this type of sentence too. In a good mood, in a bad mood. Very common. He's in a bad mood today. She's in a good mood today. In denial. Very common. Oh, I keep saying very common because all of these are... In, the word in is so common and we have all of these expressions and I'm like, yes, you have to know each one. You have to know each one. In denial. Uh, if, if you are in denial, it says refusal to accept a truth. Someone gives you something that is true and you don't want to believe it. I don't believe that. You are in denial. So uh, someone gives you some bad news. No, I'm not going to listen. You're in denial. So Dave was in denial about his drinking problem. So Dave had a drinking problem of alcohol. Someone told him, hey, Dave, you have a drinking problem. And he said, no. So he was in denial. He, he, he refused to accept the truth. In ruins destroyed with some pieces or parts uh, remaining. So usually we can say, we talk about cities, like ancient old cities. Uh, the city was in ruins. Uh, in this case, they're using a hurricane. So, you know, I know in America they had uh, Katrina, maybe 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember the hurricane in New Orleans and the city was in ruins so it was destroyed uh, but again going back to old ancient cities they are in ruins destroyed uh, many pieces uh, broken it's not all 100% broken but it looks like yeah no one's gonna live here unless they fix it so some houses some apartment buildings can be in ruins uh, that would probably mean, you know, no one's living there. In the dark. <sighs> Common. <laughs> you do not know about something. You do not know about something because you are not given information. So maybe there's a group of friends, five friends, and this person has a secret. And this person tells this friend, this friend, this friend, but doesn't tell you. Okay, so you do not know because they didn't give you that information. So you are in the dark. So another idiom. So I have no idea what they're planning. I don't know what they're planning. They always keep me in the dark. So the, in, in this situation, they don't tell me anything for whatever reason, they don't tell me. So I'm in the dark. I don't know. Common, common idiom. I use this. In the middle of something. So you are busy working. Oh, this is so common. <laughs> I'm sorry if I, I keep saying common, but really you need to know these, uh, all these expressions. Okay, let's look at our example. Sorry. I'm in the middle of something. So that means I'm busy. I'm in the middle of something. I'll call you back later. I'll call you back later. Let's put a period there to finish my sentence. Sorry, I'm in the middle of something. I'll call you back later. So I'm busy. In touch, keep in contact. Uh, how, many, how many of your friends from college do you keep in touch with? So keep in touch. Keep contact. Very common. So I'll try to stop saying the word common. 
in tune with means you understand, you understand. Uh, politicians are sometimes never in tune with their voter, with their voters. So the politicians, sometimes they don't match that are, they're thinking of the voters. So we would say, you know, if you're in tune with someone, you are thinking the same thing. And if you're not in tune with someone, yeah, you don't match in what you're thinking. In difficulty, you are experiencing a hard situation. So I found myself in difficulty paying rent this month. So you could say it was difficult to pay rent this month, but we want to use in difficulty. I found myself in difficulty in this situation in trouble in this situation often used when you have a problem he's in trouble yes i want to say this is very common sorry uh, i'm sure you've heard this expression before it's that common so he's in trouble with the police uh oh in trouble in danger in an unsafe situation he realized that his life was in danger. So his life was in a dangerous situation. Here's another one, an idiom, in a tight spot. I use it. I don't want to say common, but it is common, but I use it. Oh, when you're hat, when you, oh, I got to fix the grammar here. When you have a problem, when you have a problem, and it's often financial. It's often about money. Not always, but often. So after he lost his job, he was in a tight spot. So it's an idiom. You cannot change the words. You have to say in a tight spot. You don't want to say in a tight uh, location or in a tight area. It's always in a tight spot for a couple of months. So he was having some money trouble for a couple of months in tears you are crying uh, it could be happy crying or it could be sad crying doesn't matter just tears are coming so she was in tears when she heard the news yeah of course you could say she was crying when she heard the news but i want you to use this new Expression in tears. So she was in tears when she heard the news. We don't know if it was good news or bad news, but she was crying. In a mess means disorganized, so similar to messy, or very sad. So I have two sentences here. My desk is in a mess. In a mess, which would mean messy. I need to tidy it up so tidy messy and tidy they are opposites so messy is dirty tidy is clean so uh, my desk is in a mess i need to tidy make it clean so that's disorganized she was in a mess after her divorce okay so she got divorced and uh, she, you know, her life started to suffer. She started to have problems. So she's having trouble with her life, a lot of trouble. So we would describe someone who having a lot of trouble. Yeah, she was in a mess after her divorce. In control, mm, to have authority, power over someone or something. So it is scary when the army is in control of a country. So in control, they have the power. In the wrong, in the right. So if you're in the wrong to be at fault, you are to blame. And if you're in the right, it's not your fault. Don't blame you. So... Let's look at our example sentences. You know, he's in the wrong. So he's wrong. He's in the wrong. 
He should never have said that. So he said something wrong. He's in the wrong. You're in the right. So you are right for hiding his beer. All right. So maybe someone had a, wanted some beer. And maybe he was too drunk. So you were hiding his beer so he doesn't get to the beer. So you're in the right. You made a good decision. In the wrong, your thinking or speaking is wrong. So always try to be in the right. You don't want to be in the wrong. In vain, mm, you have to know this. When you make an effort to do something, but you don't get the result you want. Okay, so you, you're trying to do something, but you failed. So the example sentence, I prepared for my job interview in vain. They, they just called and said the position is no longer available. So this person uh, prepared. So they, they spent time to prepare for the job interview. But in vain, it was useless. Waste of time. So in vain, uh, you, it didn't work. Whatever you were doing failed. So pr that preparation didn't work. It failed because they called and said the position is no longer available. So there was no job interview. So they did that work in vain. They wasted their time. In pain, I'm sure you've heard this before, when a part of your body hurts, uh, the doctor asked the patient if he was in pain. Are you in pain? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. In pain. Here's another idiom, in over your head. Mm. I use this one. When you are in a situation that you don't have the experience to deal with. So, yeah, you're in a situation, you don't have enough skills to be in. You're not the right person to handle that situation. So this person says, I think I'm in over my head at work. I have to give a 30-minute presentation to the president of the company. All right, so this person feels because of this 30-minute presentation that uh, they are not qualified or they're not the right person to give that presentation. Maybe they don't have the skills. Maybe they don't have the knowledge. So they're going to say, I'm in over my head. I'm in over my head, which means they do not have the knowledge or experience for that situation. In demand, when a lot of people want something, uh, the new teacher is in demand. So maybe, the, uh, you know, at a private school or something, there's a new teacher and everyone, I want to learn with that teacher. They are in demand when something is wanted. We could also talk about a cell phone, like the new iPhone is in demand. A lot of people want it. It's in demand. In stock, available. We don't have any more books in stock, which would mean sold out, not available, because uh, we're using a negative don't. In doubt, when something is under question, under question means you're, you're questioning it. Her loyalty is in doubt. So we don't trust her. Uh, we are questioning, does she have loyalty? So her loyalty is in doubt. We don't trust her loyalty. In common, if you have something in common with another person, you share it with them. So you have something similar that you like or dislike, uh, something similar about the character or your preference to another person. So he doesn't have much in common with his cousin. So they're very different people. So things you can have in common, uh, hobbies. I like tennis. He likes tennis. We have tennis in common. In favor. You approve or support something. So I'm not 
in favor of the current government. So uh, I don't support the current government. I'm not in favor. You could take out this negative and just say I'm in favor of the current government, which means you support the current government. In luck, to be fortunate, you are lucky. Uh, you're in luck, so you are fortunate. We've got this in a small size. So you go to buy a shirt and you say, do you have it in my size? And the clerk will say, you're in luck. You're lucky. We've got this in a small size. All right. Very important. I, I think a lot of you already know emotions, reactions using in. Of course, the most common one, in love. When you love someone very much, Jack is in love with his wife. Good for Jack. In hope. When you do something because you are hoping for it. So I entered the competition in hope of winning. So I, I, I'm hoping for it. In hope of winning. I'm hoping to win. In fear. When you feel afraid or scared, she's living in fear of her life. Uh, maybe she's living with a bad person, so she's living in fear of her life. In wonder, when you feel amazed, wow, he looked at her in wonder. So he looked at her, wow. She was so beautiful, so in wonder, wow. In awe, to feel amazement, so similar to in wonder, in awe is more power. She was in awe of her English teacher. So she looked at the, at the English teacher in awe. Mm, this one, in someone's favor. So be to someone's advantage. So this agreement works in your favor. So there's some sort of agreement or contract and it works in your favor. So in your favor means your advantage. It helps you more than me. It's in your favor. In horror, when you are so scared by something, I looked at the burglar in horror. So a burglar is the thief that enters your house to steal something. So this person was in the house and they saw the burglar and they looked in horror like, ah. And in terror, similar to in horror, when you're so scared by something. So horror and a next level in terror. The little girl ran away from the dog in terror. That dog was, looks like it's going to eat her. She ran away in terror. That was her feeling, her emotion. In surprise, when you're surprised. She looked at him in surprise. So she looked at him in surprise. Why? He said, I love you. He said, I love you. And she looked at him in surprise. Is she happy? Sad? I don't know. All right, moving along. Uh, are you still awake? These are all important. Uh, and now you're realizing, wow, in is complicated. <laughs> Here are some common linking phrases with in. Uh, so... I say linking phrases, uh, these are good for your writing. So if you're doing formal writing, like an essay, an IELTS essay, TOEFL essay, these expressions are very common. So in particular, so in particular means a very specific. You want to, you want to focus on something. So to specify or focus on something. So he's done a lot of work for charity. In particular, he's volunteered a lot. 
So he's done a lot of work, but let's focus on one in particular. Specifically, he's volunteered. That was one of the, the some of the work he's been doing in particular. In general, to generalize, so to make a statement uh, not specific, very general. So in general, when the clouds are dark, it means it's going to rain. So uh, is this 100% true? No, but in general, usually when clouds are dark, it means it's going to rain. In addition, very common, very important, uh, writing an essay uh, a lot of students use and, 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 but you can use also, but a, a good one for the essay in addition right here. When there is something extra, so it's, it's a formal way to say and uh, or also. The company decided to give their workers a pay raise, a pay rise, a raise. I would say rise, pay raise. I would say raise. In addition, they gave everyone two extra days of holiday a year. Sounds like a great company. You got the pay raise and in addition, also two extra days of holiday. In conclusion, of course, at the end of an essay, to conclude, to end the essay, in conclusion, I'd like to say that the project was a great success in the end. In summary, to summarize, to take all the information and make it very brief. In summary, the launch was a success. In fact, to support your argument, English is a difficult language to learn. In fact, so you're, you're, when you say in fact, you're going to give some good evidence. So English is a difficult language to learn. In fact, there are too many different accents to understand. So this, there are too many ac different accents to understand. That's helping your argument that English is a difficult language to learn. So in fact, or kind of for example, you just want to help your argument. In case, if something happens in the future, so... Maybe something happens in the future. Take an umbrella in case it rains. All right. So this in case is a big maybe. So take an umbrella in case it rains. Is it going to rain? Maybe, maybe not. But if in case it rains, you are ready. All right. We're going to go back to some time expressions. Uh, there's still a lot more ways to use in. Keep watching. You have to learn this. We often use in with time expression expressions to show a period of time in the past or future. So in high school or college. So uh, I got my first cell phone in 1998. Okay, we learned before with a year we have in. So I got my first cell phone in 1998 when I was in high school. So... I'm talking about the time in high school or in college. In the end, finally, in the end, the hero manages to rescue the hostages. So in the end, at the end, finally. In the meantime, which means while, often while you're waiting for something else to happen. So I'm waiting to hear back uh, from the interview. I had an interview. I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear back. In the meantime, I'm still applying for other jobs. Okay. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting, in a while, in a short period of time, he went out, but he'll be back in a while, in a short period of time, in a minute, soon, the doctor will be with you in a minute, in a moment, in a second. All of those can be used. In time, I have it here twice. So in time, after a period of time has gone by. 
So in time, you'll start to remember and use more vocabulary. So after a period of time, you will start to remember and use more vocabulary. So we can use in time. In time has another meaning. When something takes place at the last moment. So I submitted my homework in time. So we we're getting close to the deadline, but I'm not late because I, sub I submitted in time, be right before the deadline. In season, when, when vegetables and fruit are ready to eat. Again, this is so common. I love this time of year when strawberries are in season, which means you go to the supermarket, you can see strawberries. They're in season. The opposite would be out of season. So uh, these days, I like to eat pineapple, but when I go to the supermarket, there's no pineapple. It is out of season. I am waiting for pineapple to be in season again. In a hurry, when you don't have much time. I'm sorry I can't help you now. I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry. In advance, early or before a deadline or meeting, you need to reserve the tickets in advance. Very common. <laughs> You have to know these. Uh, I know right at this point, how much more, Robin? I have a headache. Yes, we have to keep going because there's so much more to learn. Uh, I'm making this video in one, in one lesson, but you don't have to watch it all in one lesson. You can watch a little bit, come back the next day, watch a little bit more uh, so it's easier for you to learn. Uh, but all the information is here and you need to know it all. Uh, so in expressions can be used to express how something is done. In style, in, a, in an impressive way. When she travels, she does it in style. She travels in style. So in an impressive way, a very classy, good way. So how is she in style? She always goes first class and takes a lot of luggage with her. So, wow, she's in first class, a lot of luggage. So in style, in, a, in an impressive way. In fashion, fashionable. Texts are more in fashion now than emails. Okay, so... That's like the trend. It's in fashion. You could talk about fashion, clothing, but it's it can be extended to other things that are not clothing. In disguise, when you try to hide who you really are and wear different clothes. They attended the party in disguise. So maybe uh, movie stars. When they go out in public, they don't want so many people asking for photos or autograph. So maybe movie stars, they go out in disguise, they put on a hat, glasses, maybe a fake mustache to hide. They are in disguise, so we don't know who they are. In detail, when you give more facts or information, can you tell me about it in detail? So that's what you want to say. Give me all the details in detail. And a little bit stronger is in depth. In depth. You go into great detail. Tomorrow we'll cover this topic in depth. Great detail. In private, so other people cannot hear. Can I talk to you? Of the very common question. Can I talk to you for a moment in private? All right. We don't want to talk around our other co-workers or classmates. I want to talk to you in private, just you and me, because I got to tell you your, your English score and you're not going to like it. In return, in exchange. As an exchange for something. All right. Uh, pay attention. 
she looked after she looked after their children for an evening and in return they gave her money all right so she did something for them and in return so they did something for her she looked after the children in return they gave her money in exchange they gave her money so i do something for you and in return you do something for me in secret secretly they had a meeting in secret Ooh. in confidence secret information is given to you by someone and they don't want you to talk to other people so you weren't supposed to tell anyone that i told you in confidence so i told you in confidence i told you that secret you were not supposed to tell but in this case this person talking bad person so you weren't supposed to tell anyone i told you in confidence i told it as a secret in someone's honor when something is done to honor a person so they held a party in his honor. So maybe uh, there is a coworker that is about to quit the job. Hey, let's have a party in his honor for him. He is the main guest. We want to show that we love him. We respect him. So we have a party in his honor. In person, when you when you attend. The key word is attend an event. The president of the bank came to the dinner in person. So they want to emphasize, you know, the president came to the dinner. The president is a very important person. And usually we don't see the president, but they came to the dinner in person. They didn't send someone to represent them. They came in person. So we want to emphasize, wow, such an important person came in person. And you could say, uh, I met, if I could say, I met Tom Cruise in person. Again, that's a slightly different, but in person, we met face to face. In silence, silently or quietly. The class sat in silence. This is my class. Nobody's talking. They just sat in silence. So that's the same as the class sat quietly. The class sat silently. The class sat in silence. In italics, in bold. So this sentence is in bold. So all the letters are dark and big. And in italics, italics, the letters are a little bit, we say, slanted or to the side. So this sentence is bold and in, or this sentence is in bold and in italics. So we can use the in to show uh, the, the, the properties of the, you know, in writing. In writing. Uh, a contract agreement. So were you able to get a firm offer in writing? So in writing means, you know, you can you can be talking to someone and you agree, okay, I will give you five hundred dollars and you give me the your car. And we shake and you give me your car, but I don't give you the five hundred dollars. Because we have nothing in writing. There's no, no, nothing written down. We only spoke. And that, that's useless if we have to go to court or the police. So it's very important when you're doing deals, negotiating, to get everything in writing, in a contract. All right, here are a couple phrases for money in cash. I'm sure you know about in cash. Yeah, you pay bill. You pay in bills and coins. So you have to pay in cash in this shop. So they don't accept the card. You have to pay in cash. You have to pay in cash. 
And oh, we have another in. In let's for. Oh. I, I gotta keep track of all these ins. So in inside this shop, the we're using in twice here. In debt. Ooh. So remember pronunciation here. That b is silent. We do not say that b in debt. When you owe money, he's still in debt to the bank. So he still owes money to the bank. All right, how are you doing? Even more collocations. Uh, we still have a lot to go through. Uh, so th these are collocations. Again, these words go together. So for example, result in. In. We don't want to use result on. We don't want to use result at. We must use result in. That's what native speakers use. So result in to cause something. A stressful lifestyle can result in various illnesses or sicknesses. So that is result in. The result. Delay in, which is a noun. Not as fast as it should be. So the the storm resulted in many delays in deliveries excuse me there was a storm and we i i i use resulted in here there was a storm and the storm caused many delays in deliveries in a car accident in a crash if you are in a serious car accident, make sure you call 911 right away. So in a car accident, in a crash. I was in a car accident, in a car accident, in a fight. My husband and I got in a fight last night. You can use in, you can use into, both are okay. I was in a fight last week, in a group. We'd rather do the presentation in a group, together in a group, in a picture, I look terrible in pictures, so you're not photogenic. In agreement, if we're all in agreement, we all agree, let's move on to the next item on our agenda. So we are in agreement, we agree. In charge, who is in charge of this shop? So in charge, who has the power? Who's the boss? In connection with, the police have made an arrest in connection with, so it's connected with the shooting. So maybe last week there was a shooting and the police have made an arrest in connection with. So it is connected to the shooting. In one's life, so in your entire life, so talking about your whole life, Rex was the best dog I've ever had in my life. So you're all of your life. So we're, we're going to use a superlative, the best dog in my life. In use, being used. Some planes made in the 1970s and 80s are still in use today. Still being used today. Those old planes are still in use. Increase in, decrease in, increase in growth, decrease in loss, business vocabulary. In the, okay, I start off with in the 1990s, a time expression. America saw a large decrease in crime. So here, we, we should have this purple. And we should have this just blue. All right, so America saw a large decrease in crime. Involved in to participate or connect. I think we should all be more involved in our local communities. So you have a local community, you should be involved in that community. So participating more. And similar is participate in. Be active doing something. Should children participate in soldier, uh, social media? Good question. So should children 
uh, be active in social media. Wait in line. Stand and wait beha- behind people. I'd never want wait. I'd never wait in line for 15 hours to get an iPhone. You know, you hear these stories: people waiting in line. I don't want to wait in line for to get an iPhone. All right, getting close to the end. I hope you're still with me, and you're you are learning all the ways to use in. So this part is adjective plus in collocations collocations with examples comfortable in i don't feel comfortable in high heels this is true for me certainly maybe you too so i don't feel comfortable adjective in high heels i don't feel comfortable in collocation we use comfortable in together connected in he was connected in some way with that fraud scandal a couple years back. So fraud, he was doing some bad stuff, and he was connected in. He was connected in some way to that uh, scandal. Disappointed in. I'm disappointed in you, or I'm disappointed in your homework quality. So I'm, I say this every day to my students. I'm disappointed in your homework quality. Experienced in, he's very experienced in looking after animals. Interested in, he is interested in science. Polite in, impolite in. He's usually quite polite in my presence. Presence means around me, with me. So he's usually quite polite in my presence. He's usually quite impolite in my presence. Present in, there was a large crowd present in the auditorium. Uh, The, you know, it could be conference hall or auditorium where you're going to watch a concert or something. So there, there was a large crowd present in the auditorium. And yes, you guys can see I'm starting to get tired. How long is this video? Almost an hour so far. Hope you're still watching. If you make it to this point, please let me know in the comments. Skilled in. My my mother is very skilled in dressmaking. She has that skill. Slow in. His songs were slow in becoming popular. So he wrote some songs. Very slow to become popular. Successful in. They were successful in winning the contract. Good for them. Talented in. Some some of my students are talented in fixing grammar. The end? Yes, it's the end. All right, that's your homework. Woo, we did it in in an hour. Write 10 sentences using in in the comments section of this video. So I want you to choose 10 of these different ways. I would suggest choose 10 ways that are difficult for you. So try try out, you know, don't try the easy stuff. Try out the difficult stuff. Write 10 sentences for now. But you can come back, you know, in a week or two weeks and try a different 10, uh, 10 sentences and that would be fine. Don't, but don't try 120 sentences right away. Uh, do a little bit now and come back later. Do a little more. I, I, would, I think that would be great for you. And of course, homework tips. Check grammar and spelling. Please, if you're writing 10 sentences, make sure, you, you make sure the spelling is correct and the grammar is, is correct. Check Google Docs or MS Word or another way. Uh, write about yourself using in. Uh, be sincere and serious about your homework. Don't just do it on the bus or the subway. Take time. Put in effort. I, I, I'm, I'm spending an hour to teach you all of this. You can, you can spend uh, you know, 10, 20 minutes doing good homework. Post your homework in the comment section and help others if they need help. All right. Wow. You know everything there is to know about in. Uh, there, there probably are a lot more ways to use in, but I would say we got 
99% of the ways, I'm confident, we have 99% of the ways to use in. And again, it's not just a preposition. It's used in many ways, and you've got to learn all the ways. And as you know, the most, most popular word I said this video was common, because all of these are common. Native speakers use these all the time, these expressions. So start learning them. And thank you for watching this far. Please uh, do your homework.